an opportunity to, to share with you. We've heard some excellent contributions from colleagues on the national stage and from Newcastle and from, from London and about the work that's been going on with EPEC. But I think it's an opportunity really to sort of like blow our own trumpet in, in Hartlepool really about what we've been doing. So I'm going to take us uh, back a bit really to talk about uh, the Healthy Relationship <coughs> Partnership, its origins and a bit about what's informed our work. Some of you will be very familiar with this, but for some of you it might be sort of new information. So we are one of three um, national projects funded by a consortium of funders, Big Lottery, Comet Relief, Esme Fairburn, there'll be names that are familiar to you. Um, and what they wanted to do as a funding consortium is to test out ways that uh, if we were to intervene early, we could have positive outcomes for a whole range of people in the community. So Hartlepool was successful, and this is back in 2015, to be one of those projects. The other ones were in Coventry and, and Norwich. They're looking at very different sort of objectives, if you like. So in Hartlepool, there's a group of people, some of them are in the room today, who got into a room and thought, we have a lot, a lot of evidence about the impact of parental conflict on children's outcomes. So people from Hartlepool Borough Council, people from Changing Futures North East, from Bellevue Community Association, and from Tavistock Relationships, which is a big relationship support service and an organisation based in London, got together and came up with a five-year plan. <coughs> so we're now sort of coming to the end of year four of the five-year plan. So it's really important to kind of like talk about the fact that we've got a bit of a pedigree really in Hartlepool of, of addressing and wanting to work around this agenda. So, you know, we've got this, uh, this project, we've got all the evidence. So if all this evidence is so compelling and we have, uh, you know, a real sort of challenge in terms of addressing the conflict, why haven't we all done it? You know, there's a kind of a sort of a, a trick here that we need to be addressing. What is it? that is preventing us from working around this agenda. You know, the evidence is compelling, we know the outcomes. So what's stopping us? So I think what I wanted to kind of like talk to you about today is the fact that the Healthy Relationship Partnership is not a delivery organisation. We don't deliver relationship support services. We have, a, we have some ways of testing out and bringing sort of examples. So we've had parents as partners running in, in Hartlepool over the last couple of years. It's a way of sort of like a, a proof of the relationship support uh, intervention here that could be available. We know the take up of that service has been really sort of patchy. So there's something going on, isn't there? There's something going on about the evidence base, <coughs> fantastic interventions. What is it that the system, we, the system, needs to think about and do differently in order to take advantage of these things? So. We in the HRP, I'll use that sort of like uh, abbreviation, otherwise we'll be here until well after lunch. We wanted to look at some of the whole system issues that might either kind of support or prevent this agenda taking <coughs> into the report. So we went and, and talked to parents, lovely graphic there of, of parents. We went to talk to parents and we asked them, this is part of a, a piece of community research that we did just over a year ago. And we worked in partnership with the Joseph Roundtree Foundation and we recruited some parents to go off to talk to other parents about what they thought about relationships. What, what did they think about the quality of their own relationships and was it something that they kind of prioritised? And if they wanted some support with their relationships, what would they do? So hopefully if the magic works from my colleagues up there, we'll hear from some Hartlepool parents about what they told us. To be honest with you, I wouldn't know where to go. To be honest with you, I wouldn't know where to go. Probably just got to be friends, really. They'd probably be main point of contact. I'd just probably put it in the group chat. If I had any problems, I'd just probably walk it in there. And then if I had any other problems, I'd probably branch out to like family, like probably a cousin or something. Yeah. But I wouldn't know where to go like if I didn't have them, really. I've got absolutely no idea whatsoever. I wouldn't want to start on that one. I suppose the big doctors might go to church, or maybe a church group or something similar, but I wouldn't know. Uh, I wouldn't go to speak to my parents anyway about issues that I was having because I don't think they could give me an objective viewpoint. Probably with this family either. I mean, generally, you don't really hear of anything for relationships. You kind of just. There's a lot there for the kids, that's a fine there. And there's a lot there for if you've got benefits, so like, initially with your money. But when it comes to relationships, you're kind of left out there on your own. Do you think it's to do with people 
people's relationships should be more aligned with when you're saying about debt there, obviously mm -hmm. there's other services that do yeah. things specifically around mm -hmm. debt. Do you think it might be something to consider of making those more together? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like maybe like one big one. <laughs> so where people if they've if they've gone in with something that's related to debt. Yeah. And they might not be thinking about that, but where they can yeah, talk about so, it. Right, you know, why are you here? Yeah. You know, I've got a list here, so everyone there, that's bothering you. Yeah. You know, it might even be something silly, like they haven't been in public business for 14 years. But it's like thinking of all those issues yeah. being like, connected. Absolutely. Them. Yeah. And you know, sometimes it is just nice to have a friendly, non judgmental face. Friendly, non-judgmental faces. That seems to be a bit of a theme today, doesn't it? Really. So, so what we heard from that research <coughs> is what we wanted to to think about in terms of addressing was low levels of awareness. Parents we talked to really didn't have a kind of a sense of the impact of parental conflict on their children, or even prioritising that as an issue. We heard about the stresses, the financial stresses. We heard about other things that may well be going on in the family, but really that wasn't something that we heard parents talk about prioritising. We also heard that there was a really low level of awareness of where you would go for help. People had vaguely heard about the sort of national relationship support services but didn't think that was for them. And actually said, as the, the gentleman said there, looking for people that they know and trust. People that they know and trust and will work with anyway. So it kind of again you know, reflects that theme that practitioners who are currently working with, with families are best placed to offer that kind of first line of relationship support. So based on that, we, we thought last year that we wanted to have, and we had in Hartlepool, an awareness raising campaign through their eyes campaign, which was again launched at the, the conference last February when Professor Harold came. And it was about raising awareness of uh, relationship support, is it, it kind of normalising that and trying to get it back into kind of you know, everyday conversations with parents and with families that it's okay to have conflict. How we resolve that conflict is really the most important thing. And we went out and we talked to a lot of community organisations, some of which are represented today, recognising that we have an awful lot of infrastructure in Hartlepool, which isn't necessarily about relationship advice or support, but they're offering advice on a number of different issues. And if we could support those agencies to feel confident to ask those questions about relationships, we were a step along the way to providing that kind of like frontline, low-level support for families. So we looked at um, recruiting, I guess, people into the system. Um, and again, I keep referring back to, to you know, our approach as being a, a system change approach. So we had to kind of like think about, well, who is in the system? Who is it that, that parents really sort of like would, would uh, turn to and value? So going back to the, to the research, we heard that um, we heard from families that they would be prepared to receive support from them for their relationship problems from people they currently know, people in schools, from the community. And this is what practitioners told us, however. So we've got this kind of like trying to increase the kind of like demand from parents to say, yes, I do actually want to talk to somebody about what's going on in our relationship. But also thinking about, well, what's the kind of supply going to look like? What's the supply bit of that? And so we went to practitioners who parents saw as being the kind of useful resource and said, what do you think about offering uh, yourself as that resource? And this is what some of the practitioners told us about their feelings about it. So you can kind of see that the, the research that we did with practitioners said that they had you know, lack of confidence, they had a lot of discomfort around it. You'll see some of the quotes there. I would know how to refer, so there's a big referral on, you know, I need to find somebody else somewhere else who's an expert on this. I don't feel expert myself, I need to refer on. I definitely not feel confident. The people were honest enough to say, I do feel personally uncomfortable around this issue. Um, and things, you know, things that would make them feel unconfident, but, you know, they didn't want to go down that route. I think Marie talked about it as being brave. Um, and people were talking about not feeling skilled to go down that route and ask questions of parents and couples. So that was one, uh, one area that we talked about. Also, practitioners talked to us about being worried about what the parents' response would be. That kind of, uh, again, sort of fantasy, that that would be seen as intrusive. It would be seen as, 
it's, it's off limits. To talk about relationships is off limits. You can talk about money, you can talk about debt, you can talk about children's behaviour, but talking about parents' intimate relationship is actually something that people think <coughs> that it's, it's not for them. So, you know, they're worried about, uh, when you don't go there, it's always like an invis invisible barrier between me and the parents to talk about that. Um, they don't want to make it worse. Feeling that talking about, um, being really careful about talking to parents where, there's, where parents are separated. So you can see there, there's a whole, um, you know, again, another set of barriers that, that practitioners talk to us about. And the third one, is it my role? Should I be doing this? I'm, I'm X, Y, and Z kind of practitioner. Should I really be doing this? Have I got the permission from my organisation to do this? Will I get into trouble if I start to explore this kind of work with parents that I'm working with? So, referring on, thinking someone somewhere else is better place to do it, worrying about their, the authority to do that kind of work within their <coughs> job. So, these are, this is really important data for us in the healthy relation part, because if we are going to change the things in the system, we really need to listen to that and think about how we address it. So, not quite as simple, um, you know, in terms of that supply and demand, <coughs> we need to think about increasing awareness with with parents, but also kind of like increasing the, the supply of accessible kind of support. You know, again, thinking about the theme from EPEC and also talking about increasing practitioners' confidence. It's really important to think about how we as a system think about this and work differently. So I would say that, you know, this is, this is our system around the family. And I think um, it's probably fair to say that we're all kind of like recognise that for a lot of us working in organisations, we will see the family through the lens of the organisation that we are based in. Whether we're based in a school or based in a health provision, we will kind of like come to the family with that sort of, uh, I guess, organisational objective and aim in mind. And what our, our task has been in the Healthy Relationship Partnership is to try and have a, a conversation with organisations to say, actually, there is a joint agenda here. This isn't about you stepping outside of your role and doing something completely different. It is about combining those two agendas. So it's about trying to find that common agenda, talking and thinking together, and also providing opportunities like the workforce development uh, opportunities that the HRP has put out within you know, multi-agency context for practitioners in Hartlepool to take advantage of. It's, it's, a, it's a really important part of the change programme that's going on in, here in Hartlepool. You know, encouraging practitioners to work whole family, but also to think about the uh, parental relationship, having the confidence to work and to ask those, I suppose, difficult questions. And we spoke with um, three practitioners who've been on training, and they, they were practitioners who come from an organisation, Hartlepool Carers, that had predominantly worked in a, with adults. They went on training, and this is some of their impressions about how they would use that training to think and to perhaps work differently. Uh, this is Anna. I attended a class on uh, how to argue better. It was about the impact on children when parents have arguments, how that can affect the child, potentially in the future, not just now, but in the future. My favourite thing was how to, to work it out so it would prevent situations escalating. We've changed how we work at Hartlepool Carers and we now have a whole family approach. So there may be impacts on the family, maybe the caring role, poverty, children at school having difficulties, and it might create friction within the family. And hopefully, if we identify this, we can suggest options on how families can work things out so it doesn't have a negative impact on the child going forward. I have not previously worked really with children, I've mainly worked with adults, but I'm now going to be working with children as well, with families. Um, and just that bird's eye view, if you like, of how when parents are in conflict, and it seems pretty obvious, but to hear it from professionals who are working with parents who are in conflict and how that impact on, on kids was really enlightening, how they kind of sometimes mimicked the way parents deal with each other and speak to each other. As I get more involved in working with families, I think I manage to cite 
a family that I've worked with whose children have grown up now, but I, I, since the training, I kind of recognise more how their role models <laughs> behave because of what mum and dad are, you know, how they are with each other, and there's a lot of problems in, within the household, within each individual, and I can see even better how that impacts, so I'll, I'll kind of look for that, I'll kind of spot that easier, I think, now. What I got out of it was to see the impact how parents argue has on a child. You might not think a child is listening, but they are listening, and how that could impact on them in the future as well. I'm going to use the training with and working with families who need that little bit of can't agree on maybe a child's diagnosis, and this can cause a lot of arguments between parents. So I like it. Just be able to sit with parents and talk through, you know, the diagnosis if possible and work the way through it with them. We also have a number of uh, colleagues from the local authority and from other organisations who have adopted the training. I think I'm using these to kind of illustrate how different kind of organisations within the system come to the training but have taken it back into their own organisation to think about how it is applied so we'll hear from Lisa. I'm doing a wealth of training actually mostly down to the healthy relationship partnerships so I'm lucky that I was chosen to do the level four working with individuals, children and families. I've got a project that I'm developing in school as a result of that which is really exciting and I'm also doing the how to argue better training which is a tool that I'd hope to use with parents in as part of my project. I really liked one of the resources that we used in the How to Argue Better training where we were able to look at the conflict surrounding parents, we were able to look at the trigger and what escalated things from there. The families really liked having their cards with the pictures on because again that was really visual and families like that and it opens up a lot of discussion such as using the petrol can and the logs and that, that one's been really good. I really do believe that now when we're going in a meeting with families we're exploring relationships not just between parents but between separated parents, children and their parents but we're also identifying other relationships that you know significant others that have an impact on the children and we're forward thinking where even in our assessments we're always looking at relationships and the impact that that's having whether that's positive or negative so I think all the training and the work that we've been doing together it's definitely raising people's awareness and we're definitely thinking about that in everything that we do. So all of the kind of work that's been described by practitioners in their own voices today are in case studies that's on your table, so please do have a look. I was promised a Mexican wave from some practitioners when they heard their voices, but you know, that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, and I'm sure that they're available to photograph the case studies if you, if you want to go, go and find them. But I think I just want to thank the practitioners who very, very generously shared with us their experiences. And, and I think it's, it's not only about you know, highlighting their excellent work, but also to kind of, I guess, illustrate that workforce development is not just about training and then people going off and doing their you know, individual own thing, own thing. It is about saying this is about movement. We're trying to create a movement in Hartlepool of people from different parts of the system who are joined together with a kind of a common purpose and a common language and a common way of working. Um, and so, you know, having Lisa, who's, who's in a secondary school, having a locality team member, having, you know, someone from a, an adult-focused organisation, all recognising that there is a joint agenda here in terms of improving outcomes for children, coming at it from a very different perspective from their own organisations, but actually doing that work um, and, and collaborating. And that brings me really to, to another kind of, I guess, uh, part of the enabling function of the uh, Healthy Relationship Partnership is about trying to enable that collaboration, you know, so that we're creating a healthy organisational system. So we've created some opportunities for, uh, I guess, the sort of early adopters of the, you know, reducing parental conflict work to come together. So we set up um, uh, an agency network meeting. And so from the conference last year, 
we invite people to come along and to take part in a couple of sort of different opportunities to come and share practice. So we've had uh, an agency network meeting that's happened sort of every couple of months um, and we've had 30 agencies come in. And it's, it's no more sort of like sophisticated other than people come in and just say, well, what we do for families in Hartlepool is this, what do you do, how can we work collaboratively together? And a lot of that kind of synaptic links have gone on between agencies who, who really see themselves, now start to see themselves as part of a system around families. Um, again, at the conference last year, we, we talked about an, uh, setting up a healthy relationship reference group, <coughs> and a lot of people put their hands up, and again, we, we've met as, a, as a, a group that has really helped to steer the work of the Healthy Relationship Partnership. They were instrumental in evaluating the campaign that we talked about, the Through the Rise campaign, and then helped us to identify what might be the target groups that we would then identify for this year's campaign. So the fact that we are concentrating on working with new parents and working with parents who are caring for children with additional complex needs came from that reference group because they looked at the national research, they talked about their own lived experience in Hartlepool and said, you know, we need to be segmenting, we need to be targeting, we need to be doing something specific. So that's what we've acted upon. So we hope that the, those two groups will stay the journey with us. Um, we have uh, another, just over a year to go as a healthy relationship partnership and as a system change project, we need to leave the system in a different place than when we started. And I guess identifying those key champions of the system has been a really, really important part of that because uh, you will be the ones with the longevity and the sustainability. The parents will have the longevity and the sustainability. Um, and we're going to hear again, this is sort of the pictures of the, uh, of the network and the agency meeting where people just, it's nothing more sophisticated than people you know, talking very, very purposely about their role and how they can, can work together. Uh, and pictures of, of, of conferences that we've had to kind of, uh, again, uh, raise awareness of this important issue. So we talked about change champions and uh, we're going to hear a little bit more from, from Lisa about her role as a change champion. I think for our school it's certainly a vital aspect in the sense that if we have healthy relationships with our parents you know, and their relationships are healthy, we will have improved outcomes for our children. I've been involved with the reference group which is, you know, it's a good opportunity we meet up with colleagues from across the town from various roles and we look at how, what direction we think that the, the partnership should, should take and how what, what are the best options for it to develop and how to take it forward. Thank you very much. So all that's great. We've got sort of workforce development, we've got raised parents' awareness, we've got these things going on, <coughs> practitioners who've been trained. And I mentioned before about practitioners talking about have you know, have I got the kind of permission, if you like, from my managers to do this work. So senior managers in the system being clear and giving practitioners that um, authority to do this work has been really important too. So we're really pleased that our Healthy Relationship Programme Board has senior managers, some of them are here today, who have been really been behind this agenda. Danielle spoke this morning about endorsing this event. Um, and we will hear a little bit uh, from Nikki Clark, who is um, a, a part of the Healthy Relationship Programme Board, but is also service lead for early health and for health visiting in Hartlepool. So we've got a little bit of a snippet of, of Nikki we've looked at is areas where particular tensions in families arise around credit conflict and we know from research one of those areas is when you're about to have a new baby in that family relationships become sometimes more fraught and more challenged or when you've got a child with complex needs such as a child with disabilities and we've worked with health relationship partnership to look at how we could target those areas of support is what we and with the health visitor model lent itself really well to being in that position particularly to help families in that antenatal period. And we've been able to build a resource of quite visual tools that our health visitors have trialled and got some really positive feedback on families of the resources that would help them talk about some of those challenges that they are experiencing and also some tools to help resolve conflict. I think the success of using the health visitors is that they're a universal service. The fact that it is universal, the fact that within Hartlepool, 
all parents will say, oh, we, you know, we chatted about our relationship, how we were getting on, and reduce this that stigma. And what we're hoping to do to capture that system-wide change is that health visitors and school nurses work on a health database called System One. So we'll be able to actually record on the system that um, we've discussed kind of conflict with staff who initially, um, in some of the workforce needs analysis, didn't feel that they were confident to work with kind of conflict or that it was their role. Um, we we'll daily be seeing that actually their assessment, their interventions, their outcomes will focus on that. And another way to do that is our managers are able to do that in supervision. So when staff bring cases for supervision, uh, managers and supervisors are able to prompt, you know, have you looked at family relationship? Have you discussed that? So thank you, and I'm sorry to, to for the people that's been excruciating here themselves being playing to the whole sort of like conference, but thank you for your generosity in giving us those words. So I guess what I'm trying to illustrate is that you know we're having to try to make changes from community level with that raised awareness, but also kind of at strategic level, if this is to be sustained. It's great having a five-year project that's funded by voluntary funding that's brought into a town and we can spend that money and we can have lovely conferences and packs like this because it's funded by, you know, uh, into, into the town. But we need this work to be sustained. And I guess that's, that's part of, you know, our role is to try and help that sustainability by embedding it within the kind of planning and strategic structures, but also what parents should expect. So we're going to hear, um, there is an overarching strategic group in, in Hartlepool called the Children's Strategic Partnership. Um, and the, the work of the Healthy Relationship Partnership is influenced by that, but hopefully we influence it as well. Um, so we're going to hear a little bit from Councillor Harrison, who is the chair of the, of the Children's Strategic Partnership on the, on the magic machine now. Uh, the role of, of the Children's Strategic Partnership um, is basically to bring in together a lot of various agencies who work with young people and their families. One of the partnerships of sessions is to improve family relationships by trying to reduce parental conflict. And then another thing that is happening is that um, the various agencies and groups um, are self-assessing to decide what exactly their role is within the partnership. So I get, thank you very much, what, what we're seeing there, I get a little snippets in terms of how we're trying to, to ensure that this agenda is here to stay. <coughs> it's not about that five year piece of work that we, in the Health Relationship Partnership, funded to do. This is about making sure this has enduring uh, and lasting sort of impact in Hartlepool. And finally, the system change stuff is all about learning. So that's why the funders have given us this money. It's all about how are we ploughing back some of the learning that we, the, all of the learning that we are doing in Hartlepool is based, it's based on great evidence, but how are we contributing to the evidence base? So we are contributing by sharing through our funders and sharing through the Early Intervention Foundation, sharing through our networks about the work that's going on here in Hartlepool. And we, we consider Hartlepool to be ahead of the field. So we have to congratulate ourselves on that. And we know that there's an awful lot of good work happening in other parts of the country, which we, we, we embrace, we bring it here, we hit, we'll have it, we'll have a bit of that. But we're also sharing with other people as well about what's going on. And people are very interested in that whole system approach that we've, that we've tried to, to enable here in the town. So this is a very, very sort of like cheap thing really, but we've got another year to go. And we really want to ask you what you think <coughs> our priorities should be in the next year. There's a little slip of paper in your pack. <coughs> and we want you to kind of think about the kind of activities that you've heard about, the activities that you know that we are involved in. So what do we in Hartlepool need to do to ensure work with a couple parental relationship is embedded in the way we do things around here? So ideas on postcard. So that, we'll collect them in um, at, at lunchtime, but really we would value and appreciate your contribution to that. Um, we've talked about the resources available, we're launching those materials today that have kind of come from that process that I talked about earlier. Um, you know, there, there are resources also available on the website. We're launching today an interactive 
practitioner toolkit, which really provides you with downloadable materials that you can provide for parents, uh, specifically for parents who are caring for children with additional needs, and it's in the context of, of supporting their relationship. So please do go onto the website. You've got the leaflets in your pack, which kind of um, are, are indicating how to get hold of these, these materials. So please do use them. Um, so for more information about us, our website, everything is on our website. Please do take advantage of that. So that's me talking about Health and Relations Partnership. We've, I hope that you've got a sense of the kind of activities we do, but the, that we do on your behalf, and we want you to influence the work going forward.